Hey everybody, it's me, Gregor Manorino. Oh, hey, today. It is a Friday, the 13th, 2017. Let me just go off on a little tangent here. How many of you know the lore associated with Friday the 13th? Not too many people do. It's kind of an interesting uh, take. It has to do with what happened on this date uh, back in the Middle Ages. Uh, to the Knights Templar when they were rounded up by one of the two popes that existed at the same time. There were two popes a few times in history. This was one of them. Uh, I believe his name was Pope Clement the Fifth. Don't hold me to that, but I think that's what his name was. Um, in his uh, colluding at the time with the current king, who rounded up the Knights Templar, decided to burn them at the stake. Uh, this was how the church dealt with people back then who they deemed unworthy. It's kind of an interesting thing. Anyway, look it up. Uh, Friday the 13th, Knights Templar. Uh, it's, it's definitely an interesting read. All right, now with that, let's move forward to uh, the markets here. It's a classic case regarding the financial networks right now, the mainstream. Look over here, everyone. Don't look here. <laughs> they do this all the time. It's kind of funny. So as I am doing this video blog, the major stock indices are at new record highs. I don't know where they're going to close the day. I have no clue. But again, that's not where you should be looking. You should be looking at the bond market. The bond market is sending us all a signal here. So is the financial sector. Um, the U.S. dollar, precious metals, a bunch of stuff. Let's cover it. So as I'm doing this, again, stocks are at new record highs. Meanwhile, cash is creeping back into the bond market, people. It's creeping back into the bond market. <laughs> and that is pushing the 10-year yield lower. So what does this mean? So cash is coming out of somewhere. It's smelling something. It's going back into the bond market. This is probably going to take a few days to play out. But this is a signal that this exuberance here in the market that we're seeing today may not last, especially gauging from what is happening in the financial sector. The banks are getting hammered again today. Financial sector is the largest sector of them all. So we got the financial sector under pressure. Let's put this together in our heads. <laughs> we got some cash moving back into the bond market. What does this mean? Um, it means this market has the potential. Again, this is not written in stone. Has the potential to burn some off maybe next week. It might not do that. But this is how we can kind of get a gauge as to what might be happening. Just, just down the line a little bit. And if we're patient and we watch the action in the market, we can capitalize on this. And that's what I want us to do. Again, the mainstream financial people, they're all cheery and smiley. Look over here, everyone. The stock market's higher again. Yeah, it's great. But don't look at the bond market. Don't look there. And <laughs> the biggest market of them all. Don't look over there what's going on because maybe it's gonna it's telling you something that the stock market might do. The US dollar, let's talk about the US dollar. Just about a week ago, I had said publicly that the dollar looked like it was near a top. Well, I nailed that almost to the day. The dollar is now getting weaker as I am doing this. Oh, by the way, Bitcoin is now over $5,600. You know, it's kind of funny. I've been talking about Bitcoin a lot lately. And these people, and I know you're not one of them, who are so stuck in the dollar paradigm or whatever paradigm, refuse to see opportunity. They get angry at me. Oh, Greg, you know, you shouldn't be looking at Bitcoin. Look, I'm a businessman, period. And I don't care what is being bid up, if it's pencil erasers or staplers or I don't care what it is. If I think there's opportunity there, I'm going to jump all over it. And if you people don't like it, I'm sorry. Uh, then it's just, yeah, that's you. That's your paradigm that you're stuck in. You got to find opportunity and you got to rip its freaking face off. That's what I do. And that's what you should do, too. So anyway, uh, it's, and again, it's these same people that are stuck in the dollar paradigm too. Oh, no, no, no. I can't look at Bitcoin. No, 
I can't look at cryptocurrency. I just don't like the name. I told you. Forget the name. It's an asset. I don't care if it's tulip mania or crypto mania or whatever the freaking mania you think it might be. It don't matter. If there's cash to be made here, you make it and then you rip those profits out and you convert that into hard assets. Could that be any more simple for you? Lord. Okay. Anyway, let's move forward. <laughs> Um, the, the financial sector, again, I, I, I covered this right before the meltdown. Uh, it's really kind of a meltdown what's going on here with the banking sector. I told everyone to watch it. It's melting down now. We're capitalizing on that, uh, continuing to just you know, reap rewards of just having a few functioning brain cells. That's all you need here. All you need here. Okay, we got that down. We're going to ride this wave lower. We're going to watch the movement of cash now into the bond market. It's the tech sector right now that is supporting the major market indices. You know, at one point, this is going to burn off. And with that cash moving into the bond market, with cash bleeding out of the financials, I think we're getting a little bit of rotation back into the tech sector. But again, if the financials continue to fall under pressure, and I, I, I don't think we're done yet. This is going to pull the rest of the market down a little bit. We need to burn some of this off. This market is absolutely disconnected from reality. Don't listen to Greg Manorino anymore. He's been saying this for the longest time. Now listen to like banks like Morgan Stanley that saying the same thing. They sound just like this guy sitting right here. Gold and silver are up today. Um, again, they're they're going to try to pressure this lower. There are. There are, these major banks have a vested interest in keeping metals lower. They can do this with the metals. They cannot do this with Bitcoin, with the cryptocurrencies, because of the blockchain. Okay, And I believe sincerely that what we're seeing here with regard to the price action of Bitcoin is the free market. It's the free market. If the free market were allowed to function with regard to the price action of gold and silver, <laughs> the, they would be nowhere near where they are right now. They would be exponentially higher. Where would they be? Gold would be at least uh, the price of Bitcoin right now. At least. Probably higher than that. Um, and where would silver be? Probably, oh, it's so hard to say. Maybe it may be even five hundred dollars an ounce if we were going to a you know a ten to one ratio. Probably closer to fifteen to one. But that's my take on this. Uh, I'm sure you would agree with me if you have maybe three functioning brain cells. That's all you need to put this together. Anyway, it's it's all about looking at, you know. To capitalize on what's going on here, all we need to do is look at things logically. We have a market that's not real, it's distorted, it's twisted, um, and it's going to normalize at one point. I don't care what the, the world's central banks are doing. They can continue to prop this up. For all I know, they're, they're going to try to buy these banks right now. Um, Citigroup, for example, under a huge uh, amount of pressure yesterday. Today, I'm actually short Citigroup. I went over that for you yesterday. Um, it was down like two percent. That it was, they, you know. Then, then there's someone out there, some big entity trying to catch a falling knife here. You got to be nuts, uh, trying to trying to uh, do that. So this must be some big institutional investors, but it's still down pretty substantially. Actually, let me check that right now. Uh, Citigroup is only down now, point uh, four percent. It was down over two percent earlier today. So something's going on over there. Uh, I don't care. I'm still short it. I will stay short it until I see a real turnaround here. Um, Goldman Sachs, same thing. Uh, I'm short Goldman Sachs. Let's see what Goldman Sachs is down 0.59 right now. Uh, again, these seem like small numbers, don't they? But in the option which I trade, uh, it, it, this this is magnified uh, huge. So that's how you capitalize on these things. You trade options for leverage. That, that simple. Uh, and the beauty of the option is you can never lose more than what you paid for it. So it, it's, it's a way to protect your wealth at the same time. Although there are those that are going to think it's mystifying. Oh, I can't trade options because I'm going to lose everything. No, that's what they want you to think. Okay, But if, if you follow some basic parameters of which I outlined for you for free, okay, free, uh, on, on my website, you can download 
um, one of my ebooks there's 100% for free. I don't ask for anything. I just want you guys and girls out here to understand that this is not just a game being played by the Wall Street banks or guys like me. You can do it too. So with a little bit of a little bit of research and a little bit of knowledge, a little bit of reading, dedicate, you know, I don't know, a couple hours a day or an hour a day and you'll be able to do this too. It's not that hard. Anyway, all right, so let me summarize because I know I'm, I'm going off on a, a tangent here. Financials remain under pressure. Tech is supporting this market. There's a rotation out, out of financials, I think, into tech right now. Uh, if pressure remains on financials, tech is going to sell off. we got cash moving into the bond market. This has the potential to put pressure on the stock market. We're going to rip its face off by going short, period. That's what we're going to do. It's a beautiful thing. We're going to watch the dollar. The dollar is under pressure here. Metals are rising. Uh, remember I told you how gold and silver were on sale? I told you exactly when that sale ended. I did. Uh, and, the, you know, it's still on. Gold and silver are going to remain on sale for the foreseeable future. Period. But those prices were so stupidly low a couple of weeks ago. I hope all of you backed up the truck and just loaded up. That's what I did. That's what I did. I told you. That's what I was going to do. Um... Let's just watch all this stuff and let's capitalize on this. Look for opportunity wherever it might be. I don't care what the asset is. Okay? Get out of the paradigm. If you're, if you're one of the many that are stuck in some type of thought process, oh, I can't do that. No, no, no. I won't touch that because it's labeled with this. It has this label. It's a cryptocurrency, for example, so I can't touch that because it's not real because it's fake, because it's digital. You mean like your dollars? Because they're digital too. <laughs> In case you don't know, and if you don't believe this guy, go to the Federal Reserve's own website. On this planet Earth, there only exists 1.4 trillion of actual printed cash. 1.4 trillion. Did you hear that number? The rest of it is digital. It doesn't really exist. And the money you think you have in your bank, it's not there either. Uh, Big surprise? I hope it's not because I've been outlining this for you. The banks are only required to keep 10% of it. The rest of your money, it's not there. It doesn't exist. It's, it's off the elemental chart. It's just you know in fantasy land. So get out of the paradigm, okay? And you'll be a lot better off. I can promise you that. Hey, it's Friday the 13th. You will not see this guy here until Monday. Um, barring some major event, I am taking this weekend off uh, and I'm gonna relax can't go by the pool because it's cold here even in Vegas for me but I can promise you I am just gonna just kick back I want you to think about these things that I've been outlining for you uh, and try to ponder how you can make it work for, for you uh, that's what this is all about that's what I'm trying to do with that said <laughs> I'll see you Monday <laughs>